Professor Matt Sinkowitz. Uh, he is a professor here at Boston, Boston College. Uh, and um, whenever I can, I get a chance to speak with him about uh, issues in the Middle East, particularly re pertaining to uh, Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, here in the United States with APAC. Um, and Professor's already ready. He's ready to rock and roll. Professor, how are you? Thanks so much for, uh, for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing great, doing great. I missed you there for a second, audio-wise. Um, again, thanks so much for joining us. Let's, let's jump right into the story because there's so many stories happening this week. Um, the one I wanted to talk to you about, uh, and again, it's always a pleasure to have you. I want to talk about Benjamin Netanyahu's tweet, which, um, to say very lightly, rubbed me furiously the wrong way. This, 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 this really ticked me off to the point where I, I was like, you know what, let me just be quiet because ultimately what would happen is I'll be accused of anti-Semitism for saying anything. Um, and so instead of that, I said, let me just shut my mouth and then talk to my, my friend who is an expert uh, in the areas. Uh, what did you think? Actually, let me read it. I, I'm going to pull it up on the screen for my, um, for, sure. for our viewers to, um, yeah, this, hang on a second here. Let's, if I can find it, it doesn't look like I can find it. It's on the screen behind me. So let's take that. I'll put it up here. Uh, so here it is. He says, President Trump uh, is right. I built a wall a long time. Um, I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me turn around. Along Israel's southern border. It stopped all illegal immigration. Great success. Great idea. Um, uh, Matt, what were, what were your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, the first, uh, the first immediate thought is that uh, one thing has nothing to do with the other in terms of circumstances mm -hmm. uh, and that we you know there's this sort of uh, attempt that we're seeing very overtly we saw today in Sean Spicer's press conference uh, to tie uh, the 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 uh, situation in America, how it relates to immigration with Israel in sort of this very odd fashion um, I, I think there's some basic questions on the the effectiveness even if you just grant the uh, the intentions of of uh, of the israeli border walls there's there's good question as to whether or not they are as effective as uh, netanyahu implies there um you know the, the number one thing here we see is this attempt to sort of level the the issue and, and suggest that uh, uh you know sort of all all border situations are the same that uh, there's an easy equivocation easy easy way to, to compare America's situation with with, with Israel's which uh, is, is not the case there are mm -hmm. some overlaps of course like there always are going to be but these are radically different situations and uh, it's just it's just pure politics and posturing to try to pretend that uh, uh, one really uh, suggests uh, that the the other should or shouldn't happen um, you know that and of course uh, there's a lot of politics uh, to uh, anytime Israel's talking about creating uh, separations, barriers right. that uh, just have, uh, they're, they're, they're not in there, right? And of course Netanyahu's not going to put that out there, right. uh, but it, it points to all sorts of, of, of concerns. Which, which, I mean, it brings up a lot of concerns because it seems like a very um, childish and petty move, in, in my opinion, right? Like this is, yeah. this, this, the, the, the parallels um, almost don't exist unless you just, you know, if you say, oh, there's a wall, here's a wall, <laughs> samesies, right? That's the only kind of logic that I could actually see there, except for the fact that he wants to undergird Trump. He, he likes Trump's, yeah. he likes Trump's position on his internal politics. So he's going to come out in full throated support of Trump whenever he can and whatever it suits him. But he was very clearly silent on what I consider to be borderline Holocaust denial uh, yeah. in the Holocaust remembrance um, message from the White House, which for the first time, I think ever, did not refer to Jews or anti-Semitism at all. And then their justification was, well, there were others, there were other victims of the Holocaust. What were your right. thoughts on that and on uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's clear silence about that? Yeah, well, I think, one, you're right to tie these things together and that, that the... Uh, uh, not only the the statement made by 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 Trump, but also the uh, response today in, in the press conference by Spicer points to uh, a very particular idea about how this administration wants to understand uh, Jewish people. Uh, mm. So, just first and foremost, it's it's ridiculous to to make this statement uh, and and not include uh, a mention of anti-Semitism. Uh, to be clear, uh, it would it would also be a problem to to suggest that the only victims of the right. Holocaust were. Or Jews. Uh, there's no need to. Um, uh, you, you you can do both, or you could you can easily mention the fact yeah. that that 
the Holocaust, uh, you know, uh, amongst other things, was an, uh, an overt effort to annihilate the Jewish people throughout Europe and, and perhaps even beyond. Uh, it's not hard to prove that, to understand that. You can also, you know, say, uh, list these, these sort of, uh, uh, the, the, they said everyone suffered, which is, A, not true, of course, not everyone suffered from the right. Holocaust. Lots of groups did. You could list them, right? right. It's not, it's not tweet it's not like they're running out of characters and they have to they have to decide what to include and what not to right, right. Uh, you, you could you could ask a historian what what are the what are the groups that we should mention and then put at the end to sort of catch all so the idea that it's somehow more respectful to not uh, cite uh, you know the, the the fact that the Holocaust was in in uh, you know in in large part right and, and it's sort of central tenets the the idea of annihilating the jewish people it is ridiculous um it, and it and it makes you ask why right you have to start right. thinking what is this is this uh is this steve bannon is there a white nationalism is there if not that just a particular sort of uh, uh we're going to get away from identity politics at all costs even if right. it's sort of leads the soft edge of, of, of Holocaust denial. And then I think we got a bit of an answer today uh, with Sean Spicer. Uh, so he gets asked the question, uh, he got asked the question by, by the ZOA, the Zionist Organization of America, which is a, a super right-wing organization uh, and one that uh, was probably inclined to be very friendly to, to Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and they ask and say, what are you doing here? What point are you making? Uh, and he, he uh, makes this incredible, I think, and sort of uh, the most offensive part of it all was the transition that Spicer made. He said, oh, you know, forget that, uh, you know, the, you're, the president went out of his way to make any statement and he was trying to be respectful. And besides, what are you Jews complaining about? Uh, look how good what? he's going to, to Israel. No, 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 no. You're, uh, you're, 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 you're paraphrasing. I mean, clearly you're paraphrasing. Oh, paraphrasing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I paraphrasing. mean, but wait, he said that because I, I missed that altogether. Well, he didn't say those words, but he said that. Right. <laughs> what he said was, I don't believe you're suggesting that there's some mistreatment of uh, of, uh, you know, Jewish relations with wow. this administration. Because look how good we're going to be to Israel. Wow. And it really shows the kind of Jew that this administration is willing to stand for. Wow. Right. It, it's it's a Jew who is fixated on, on one issue only. Right. An ethno nationalist view of Israel. Right. It's a it's a it's a Jew who sort of uh, uh, reinstills the idea, perhaps, that uh, that Jews are other. Right. Uh, in the United States, that America maybe is a Christian nation. And so uh, as long as, you know, we'll like Jews so long as they are pointing to uh, uh, this other place that someday they'll go to. Mm -hmm. At the very least, it's the, the diversity of Jewish culture, the fact that Israel is not the centerpiece of every aspect of Jewish life. Uh, and you it's really on, something. You, you hit on something there that I, I actually wanted to ask you about. And I know you're pressed for time and we have like 18, huh. 20, 30 dozen other stories to cover. But you hit on something there that I have to unpack. There's this relationship that I've never actually I kind of understand, but I never understood from the uh, Israeli or the Jewish perspective uh, between uh, Dominionists, uh, Christian Dominionists, who yeah. who really look with a they look favorably towards Israel almost because of apocalyptic uh, in, in apocalyptic terms. Uh, and I never understood why uh, there would be a faction of 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 uh, Israelis or Jewish people or Jewish Americans who would accept those the terms of that relationship? Um, do you, you you know what I'm referring to? Maybe you could put it in better words than I can. Oh, oh for sure, this for sure. And I think there's an interesting. Uh, it's not exactly that, but sort of parallel thing going on. So, so historically, there has been a, a significant chunk of uh, uh, both the Israeli and and the uh, the diasporic Jewish population who who says, look, the number one thing to worry about is the survival of Israel. Uh, that um, you know, uh, any friend of Israel in the short term is worth making. Mm. Uh, we'll deal with the long term later, right? Mm. Israel from its start was was self conceived as being something about to be pushed into the sea, about to be destroyed. Uh, there's complications to that history. There are elements that are overstated, uh, but it's certainly true that Israel was 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 created in a in a hostile uh, situation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, hostile situation uh, for a lot of people. <laughs> Um, not just uh, uh, Israelis and Jews, right. but including Israelis and Jews. Uh, and so there have been, uh, for, the, for the most part, from the sort of right-leaning side of the Israeli uh, political spectrum, there's been an acceptance to say, look, uh, we'll deal with, uh, with the Messiah when the Messiah comes, for <laughs> now we'll take their money, right? <laughs> and it's, it's like, a, it's, so, it's an uncomfortable so, thing. 
I don't mean to laugh. Meaning, I don't mean to laugh, but is no, it could, could we boil it down to the fact that they don't believe in 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 the Messiah? The, they don't believe the Messiah is coming back, so they're like, whatever, we'll take their money. Of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. But uh, I think it's uh, I think I'm quoting uh, oh, I forget Gershom Gerberg who said this. Maybe others. Right. They have a story. Right. It's a it's a it's a it's a five act play, and the Jews disappear after the fourth act. Right. Mm. This is that. And uh, for, for many people, that's, that's really discomforting, especially because if that's the basis of your friendship, well, as soon as you start uh, yeah. doing it, it's really flimsy, right? It could, yeah. it could totally uh, break down at any moment. I do see a parallel here. Not, it's not religious, uh, but, you know, there is in some ways in which you look at the way that they approach the, the, the Trump administration, approach the Holocaust uh, uh, yeah. statement. You look at Steve Bannon's involvement, mm -hmm. and you see a certain sense in which white nationalism and, and Zionism of a very sort of specific regressive stripe go together. Wow. Right? If you're a person who believes in ethnic essentialism, right, which is what white nationalists believe, right, right, then, then Israel's not really a problem, regardless of what you think of Jews. You say, oh, that's where they go, mm, right? Okay. We'll send them over there. Yeah. And this is a, a, a similar possibility, right, kind of like the one you mentioned with the uh, evangelicals. Yeah. No, that that actually is a perfect breakdown. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Matt, it's always a pleasure having you on. Um, when can we get you back? Oh, you tell me. Love to come back on. Matt. All right. Tell everyone how to get up with you real quick. Oh, uh, find me at Media Studied. Um, and uh, yeah, send me a send me a tweet. Happy to to uh, to interact with with Ben's listeners. Love coming on the show. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. 857-600-0518. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to join the conversation, Professor Sinkowitz, it's always a pleasure having him on. Um, not just to not just to say that. See, see, there's a game, right? There's a game afoot. I'm just going to be full transparent now. Uh, in in tr full transparency, um, I respect his opinions, and I think he has a very robust um, critique that actually can lend insight to a lot of people. Uh, I'm learning a lot from him. That's why I get him on the show a lot because. Uh, I'm not an expert in that field by uh, by any means. My 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 expertise is um, um, international relations. That's actually what I've studied. Uh, economics to a certain degree. I have limited, you know, some master's work there. Um, I don't have expertise in uh, Israel Palestine, uh, and I so I lean on him and other voices. Uh, that's one thing. But then there's a game afoot of identity politics, right? Because I would clearly, if I said the exact same thing. <laughs> that Matt just got through saying I would be considered to be uh, anti-Semitic. So uh, not only am I learning from him, but he's also doing a good service for um, not only our show, but the conversation at large, because most people who are not Jewish cannot say half the things that he says uh, without being called anti-Semitic. Just ask, just ask Keith Ellison, right, who didn't say anything controversial, but I digress.